Tonight's broadcast is made possible by a generous donation from the Berkeley Heights 5K charity Road Race and Fitness Walk. To learn more, go to berkeleyheights5k.com. Welcome to This Week in Berkeley Heights, our community news program taped at the Governor Livingston Television Studio and sponsored in part by Berkeley Heights Patch. I'm Mary Canellos. Here's a look what's making news in Berkeley Heights. Attorneys for the controversial Berkeley Aquatic Center filed a motion in Union County Superior Court recently. The attorneys were hoping to force Berkeley Heights into a setting a date for a special election which could pave the way for the center's proposed 51,000 square foot facility in Warren. The township had been ordered by Union County Superior Court Judge Karen Cassidy to set a date for an election for residents to weigh in on the BAC's request for sewer connection for the Warren Center after the township council voted against allowing the connection in 2011. According to a press release issued by a group known as the, the BAC BAC, which supports the proposed facility, the court's order was issued on February 25th when a township requested injunction against the petition drive for a vote was denied. According to the press release, Judge Cassidy ordered the township to schedule a special election date within 10 days of the order, but the township hasn't done so. The press release also said that the court's decision was of the latest in a series of failed attempts by the Mayor Bruno and Township Council to deny Berkeley Heights residents the vote on, on the sewer agreement, allowing the BAC to connect to the Berkeley Heights sewer plant and block a new BAC facility from being built in Warren Township. In December of 2012, weeks after a committee of petitioners on behalf of the BAC submitted more than the requisite amount of signatures required by law to set a special election, the township filed its unsuccessful request for an injunction. Jim Wood of the Berkeley Aquatic Center said the mayor and township council have been asked numerous times to sit down and discuss in the hopes of coming into an agreement that would prevent litigation, but the requests have been denied. Did you know that on average, Americans upgrade their cell phones every 18 to 24 months? In fact, the Environmental Protection Agency estimates there are 1 billion retired cell phones accumulated in U.S. households. Because cell phones contain hazardous materials in their batteries, some states have made it illegal to dispose of the cell phone batteries in the trash. So what should you do with your retired cell phones? The cell phone recycling fundraiser run by the Project Graduation Committee of the Governor Livingston High School PTO has a solution. By donating your retired cell phones to Project Graduation, you can dispose of your unwanted cell phones responsibly while helping Project Graduation raise funds. Working with a, with a recycler, Project Graduation earns funds for every collected cell phone, regardless of age or condition. At the recycler, the phones are recycled through reuse and refining programs. If the phone has a resale value, it's refurbished for reuse. Otherwise, the phone is processed through an environmentally responsible refining program which reclaims various metals back to their natural state. Although the memory of donated phones is erased by the recycler during the processing, anyone with concerns about personal data should clear the phone's memory before recycling. In order to make the cell phone recycling fundraiser a success, Project Graduation is seeking the participation of the community. Residents can gather all unwanted or broken cell phones and bring them to the nearest collection bin for donation to Project Graduation. Collection bins are located at the Berkeley Heights Public Library, the Mountainside Public Library, and at wireless zone stores in New Providence and Gillette. Project Graduation is an all-night substance-free celebration for the Governor Livingston High School senior class of the night of graduation. A tradition at GL since 1989, this annual event is entirely financed by donations from the community and local businesses, contributions from parents and fundraisers like the cell phone recycling fundraisers. If you have any questions regarding the cell phone recycling fundraiser or project graduation, please email glprojectgraduation at gmail.com. Approximately $3,000 in cash and jewelry were stolen during a burglary that took place in Berkeley Heights last week. According to the Berkeley Heights Police Department, the incident took place on March 13th on Summit Avenue. The investigation revealed that the residence was entered during the day through a rear window of the home. Detectives are continuing to investigate the break-in. Whether you're a new mom looking for other new parents to chat with or you have grown children, a new Summit-based group is providing a unique outlet for moms to chat with other local mothers and attend events about all things that are mom-related. Summit Mommies 24-7 is a site for moms not only in Summit but in all nearby communities such as Chatham, Madison, New Providence, Berkeley Heights, and anyone else who is interested in being a part of their forums and events. Some of the events Summit Mommies runs include lunches with moms and children that included 
guest speakers such as pediatricians and nutritionists. The group also has Mommy's Night Out events. The group has family fun events at places such as Kidville and Summit, but organizers are hoping to include activities in other towns as well. If you want to be a part of Summit Mommies 24-7, visit their website, summit.mommies247.com. The Catholic Church has a new leader. White smoke billowed from the chimney of the Sinstein Chapel in Rome last Wednesday, announcing that the College of Cardinals had chosen a new pope following a relatively brief conclave. The selection process used to select a new pope. Pope Francis of Argentina is one of the first non-European pontiff in more than 1,000 years and the first pope ever from the Americas. Approximately 40% of the world's Catholics live in Latin America. Local religious leaders believe Pope Francis, whose election comes in the midst of Catholic season of Lent, is known for his humility and ability to identify with the poor. The new pontiff selection came one month after Pope Benedict XVI shocked the Catholic Church by announcing his resignation, which became official on February 28th. And now turning to some business-related news, King's Food Markets will open its newest location in Gillette on March 22nd. Representatives from King's Gillette says the new store will provide the rare finds and fresh local quality ingredients to shoppers. In addition, this location will offer several new features including made-to-order meals such as pizza, a hibachi station, and chef-inspired prepared goods. During a special opening ceremony, special remarks will be made by the King's CEO, Judy Spires, store manager, Donna Lewis, and Gillette's Deputy Mayor, Cornell Schuler. Additionally, King shoppers will enjoy food samples, chef demonstrations, and special nutritionist consultations, which will continue throughout the weekend. Get your calendars out because we're about to take a look at a few new events and activities coming up in the next few weeks. Ready for a night at the movies? The Berkeley Heights YMCA will host a family movie night on Friday, March 22nd at 6.30 p.m. The admission cost of $5 per family includes popcorn and refreshments. The YMCA is located at 550 Springfield Avenue. Singer Lori Rubin will take the stage at the Wharton Music Center in Berkeley Heights on March 22nd at 8 p.m. The mezzo-soprano will perform in the Wharton Music Center's Performance Hall, located at 60 Locust Avenue in Berkeley Heights. The event costs $10 for adults and $5 for children and is open to the public. How about some breakfast? On Saturday, March 23rd, the Rotary Club of Berkeley Heights will be hosting the 32nd annual Berkeley Heights Rotary Family Breakfast. This event was originally scheduled for last November, but was postponed due to Hurricane Sandy. The event is being held at the Union Village United Methodist Church at 1130 Mountain Avenue from 7.30 to 11.30 a.m. Pancakes, eggs, sausage, orange juice, milk, and coffee will be served. Tickets are available from Rotary Club members and local Boy Scouts, or you can pay at the door. Ticket prices are 7 per person or 20 to feed the entire family. Proceeds from the family breakfast will benefit the Berkeley Heights Education Foundation. The Special Olympics of New Jersey will, will be holding their Get Into Our Game track and field program on Sundays from 11 a.m. to noon until May 19th with the exception of Easter Sunday and Mother's Day on the track at Governor Livingston High School. Email recreation at bhtwp.com for more information or to register. Remember, if you have any news tips or story ideas that you'd like to see featured on this show, send an email to Tony Ann Antonelli, Patch's Associate Regional Editor for Union County, at tonyann.annanelli at patch.com. We hope you enjoyed our new segment. On behalf of Berkeley Heights Patch, the students, and the GLTV staff at Governor Livingston High School, we hope you have a great week. I'm Mary Canales. We'll see you next time, Berkeley Heights. Tonight's broadcast is made possible by a generous donation from the Berkeley Heights 5K charity Road Race and Fitness Walk. To learn more, go to berkeleyheights5k.com.